Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And in today's video, we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the new Dyson 360i robot vacuum. Now, starting with my final thoughts first, this is a great piece of tech and an even better vacuum. While there are a few minor limitations, they're just that minor and can easily be overlooked by the leaps and bounds Dyson has made considering that a robot vacuum should focus on the vacuum portion of the product first and foremost. Having said that, let's unbox it. This is the model with the fuchsia colored axis. Accents. There is, however, a blue option that I think most would prefer. The box is actually surprisingly small, and I didn't even believe that it was the robot when I saw the UPS guy carry it up to the door. And that obviously translates to a smaller robot, too. We'll get to that later, though. Now, all sides of the box feature images of the robot as it would appear when viewed on the corresponding sides. Overall, a really classy box. Now, using my knife, let's cut through the plastic seal protecting the box, flip it over, and lift the lid to reveal the robot sitting directly on top in a protective wrap and foam cushioning. While there's nothing to show scale, I can immediately tell you guys that this is the smallest robot vacuum by way of footprint, not counting height. Now, beneath the vacuum in the lower right, we have the power brick and to the right of that is the docking station that the power brick plugs into. On the bottom they've included a sticker that highlights how to set up the base station and get the 360i charging. Simply unfold it, set it up against a baseboard, plug it in on either side, which is awesome by the way, and set the robot on the contacts. Also in the box we have some literature that we're just going to set to the side. Now unwrapping the robot reveals a beautiful design with Dyson 360i branding toward the bottom on the debris bin which is really the front when it's in operation. And of course, the cornerstone of this tech, it's 360 degree field of view camera. We'll get into that in a little bit though. Getting a look at the bottom of the machine, we have what Dyson has dubbed their tank tracks, which aid in maneuverability when the bot is transitioning surface types, for instance, from hardwood to carpet or a rug that it has to push itself up onto. Also on the bottom are two stationary wheels and one in the back that pivots and is spring loaded to enable steering. Additionally, we have the metal contacts and what's arguably most important, the brush bar, which contrary to its overall circular design spans the width of the bot. This allows the 360i to travel across the borders of a room with ease and actually is consistent with a regular vacuum in that it won't have to travel over areas twice to accommodate for missed spots like most circular robot vacuums do. Also, the brush bar does lock into place and to take it out, simply use a quarter to unlock it and pull out the brush. From there, you can clean it off. Now for the debris bin, simply push on the release and pull it out. Next, the top easily slides out of the base of the debris bin and you can see that the bin also has a spot for a filter of sorts that maintains airflow and allows for heavier debris to settle at the bottom. Now when emptying it, you'll want to ensure that any hair or fiber is removed from the top filter piece. And speaking of filters, let's return to the back of the robot and lift up this plastic case to reveal what is definitely the largest filter I've seen on any robot vacuum. Now beneath that is the lithium ion rechargeable battery that screws in. And finally, there's also a USB port beneath the filter guard, which allows you to update the software manually if you don't want to connect your robot to Wi-Fi for whatever reason. Instructions on that can be found on Dyson's site, but more on connectivity later. Now, because this is a connected product, of course it has an iOS and Android app that allows for controlling the 360i and is critical to the product's setup, again, without the need of a computer and manually updating it. Now, after connecting the base to the power adapter, downloading the Dyson Link app from the App Store and signing up for a quick account, we're ready to add the robot. For step one, it tells us to dock and begin charging the 360i. After connecting to Dyson servers, you'll be greeted with a message that allows you to name your robot. I've chosen Argus, which I think is pretty fitting. Now, you can also enable auto updates, and from there, you should be good to go, and your 360i is ready to be used. Now, this whole process takes less than five minutes. And now that we've unboxed it, highlighted the majority of the features, and we've set it up, let's check out the performance. Now, I've been using the 360i as my primary vacuum for a few weeks, and I have to say that I absolutely love it. In addition to having superior suction, thanks to Dyson's second-generation digital 
motor, which spins at up to 78,000 RPMs. It's also able to clean the same space faster than most of its competitors. Now, the reason behind this is twofold. In addition to the brush bar that spans beyond the footprint of the robot, allowing it to make less passes and therefore be more efficient, the camera with its full 360 degree view of any room it's placed in allows for superior accuracy. Though this is something to consider because it does use that camera as its primary means of navigation, it won't work very well in low light and it won't work at all in the dark. Now the camera is capable of rendering the robot's environment at 30 frames per second, which is impressive considering it captures all angles. The robot identifies landmarks within the room and is then able to triangulate its position relative to the room, which is the key or secret, so to speak, for Dyson's superior systematic navigation. There are really no random movements with the 360i, which is great. Furthermore, because the robot knows where it is in relation to the room, it actually builds a map and highlights how much of the room it was able to cover once the job is complete. And I've tested the accuracy of the maps by placing objects like a dog bed in the room for one sweep and removing it for another cleaning time. And I've confirmed that it's not only accurate, but that it also regenerates the map on every cycle. It also uses infrared sensors to detect and avoid objects, so it doesn't intentionally bump into things like most ordinary robotic vacuums do. The only thing it's lacking are the virtual walls to shield off areas you don't want the robot to go into, like a fireplace for instance. Though Dyson may have something up their sleeve when it comes to a potential virtual wall accessory. And of course, it is able to pick up dirt, dry spills, pet hair, and general messes that you normally use a traditional vacuum for almost, if not as well, as its ancient predecessors, of course being regular vacuums. It's able to handle multi-rooms by charging when necessary and resuming the job where it left off, which is a clear must for robotic vacuums these days. Some people have complained about how much taller it is in comparison to other robot vacuums, and while I agree that it is substantially taller, which could limit its usage in some scenarios, it fits under my bed just fine, and that's what counts for me. Of course, though, every person's home is different, and if you have concerns, get the measurements online on Dyson's site and double check any places that prompt concern before acquiring the robot. Now the app is simple and straightforward, allowing you to switch cleaning modes between maximum for full suction or quiet mode for a longer runtime and for a more peaceful vacuuming experience if you're at home. You can also schedule it to run at a specific time, change the settings, get help with the robot, and even see past jobs with the map it builds that I was telling you guys about earlier. It's all really very high tech, and because it does connect to your home Wi-Fi, the robot can be started from anywhere in the world as long as it maintains connectivity. And most of the minor issues that I've had with it, such as it getting stuck under a counter when it shouldn't have and should have avoided it, or its refusal to build the map in some instances, will presumably be addressable in future OTA software updates for the robot. In fact, it automatically installed a brand new update enabling quiet mode after the initial setup, and it sent a simple notification to my phone telling me it was seamlessly updated. Now beyond the no virtual wall at launch, my other concern with this product is simply that the debris bin is actually at the front when it's in use, which means that when it's docked, you can't simply empty the bin, you have to actually take it off the dock, empty it, and then realign it with its metal contacts. It's nothing major, but just a minor design issue that will hopefully be addressed with the next generation of the product. Again, this is a fantastic robot and it's best at its primary function, vacuuming, which is what you want in a robot vacuum. Now, I can't wait to see where Dyson goes from here and what changes they make to future iterations of the 360i, which is an already near perfect robot vacuum. I hope you guys like this video. Be sure to drop it a like if it helped. Let me know your thoughts on the 360i in the comments and subscribe for more Dyson coverage in the future. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCracker iDevice community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.